What is up guys? Happy Christmas to you all, first of all. As a lot of people seem to be really struggling with the concept of either the date or patches, but uh, I guess it's high time I created an updated tier list so that a lot of you guys can see what I think is, you know, the meta at the moment in PvP. And again, I repeat, in PvP. And just to confirm, the date is Thursday, December the 28th, 2023 at 753 PM. So as of that time, barring any future patch notes, this is the current PvP tier list or what I think of it. In S tier, we have Affliction Warlock. Uh, generally pretty strong. As Affliction Warlock, I generally class this as either Haunt or Meta. And then playing with the Drain Life Rune and then most likely going to be the Corruption Extending Rune. Uh, Arcane Mage. Probably going to be around B tier, I would say. It depends on what you class as Arcane Mage. There's a couple of different Mage specs you can play. You know what? I'm actually going to put it in A tier. And we're going to kind of kind of talk a little bit more about this. But this is basically going to be going to be Arcane Blast, uh, Living Flame, and then the Regeneration Rune. And I'm classing this as Arcane. Generally, you go Frost Talents with it. It has the potential to beat... A lot of the classes in S tier in duels. However, I think it falls down a little bit more in, you know, group content where there's more players. It really does shine more in 1v1s. So as a result, I'm going to take it down a tier. However, if you just want to do duels and smaller scale content in 1v1s, that kind of thing, I think actually this spec can potentially be S tier due to the sustain that it has while putting out a really, you know, a good amount of damage. The main thing that it falls down on, I would say, is mana, but most classes you're going to be able to add mana and, and add sustain, especially with the potential to reset with Polymorph. Next, we've got Arms Warrior. And I'm only going to put one Warrior spec on this list. I haven't really seen any Furia or Prot Warriors in PvP, so I'm just going to keep those out of it for now, just for simplicity's sake. So I'm going to put Arms Warrior. Uh, it's kind of between B and A tier, I would say. It's, it's okay if it has you know full gear but it won't beat most of the s tier classes in 1v1 it's more of a, a support i guess class or a cl class that requires support you know in, B in bgs well pvp that kind of thing you know if you, if you have a priest with you for homunculi that sort of thing for the armor pen then you know warriors can do a lot of uh, single target damage but on their own they're kind of up creek without a paddle so to speak Next up is going to be Asa Rogue, and I think Asa Rogue specifically into you know high armor targets can be decent but i haven't seen that many of them in general so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put them in the f tier f tier is just going to be stuff that i just generally don't see so i'm not really including it in the tier list it's not that it's like uber bad or something i just don't have enough real information um in terms of you know how much we've encountered the spec to really comment on it properly balance is going to be the next and i'm actually just going to plot that in s tier as well the range that this spec has combined with the power of star surge is actually insane costs basically no mana 42 yard range on it instant damage you know can crit for over 400 absolutely pumping at the moment have good potential to kite stay alive range uh, all of these things depending on what other rooms that they're actually playing with generally you'll see these played with things like sunfire and the free wrath rune so yeah expect a good moonkin to just really be staying sort of out of your range you're gonna have a hard time connecting to them in wild pvp in bgs and they're just gonna be turreting absolutely massive damage with really really high uh mana efficiency from the back so it could cause a lot of problems for a lot of people if you're not able to connect on them next of course is bm hunter and with how strong pets are at the moment definitely gonna be an s tier as well and i'm actually gonna put marksman up there since they're very similar i would say in terms of power Marksman having a little bit pet, less pet power, but more ranged ability, but still putting out an absolutely insane amount of damage. Um, and this is obviously going to be very strong in both World PvP and BGs. A little bit weaker in duels, I would say, than maybe the other, the other, other, some of the other classes I'm going to be putting in S tier, but still capable of beating most of the classes, given the correct player controlling them. Next up, we've got Combat Rogue and... I'm going to consider this to be the more widely played rogue spec, I would say. And just due to the nature of the class, you know, the stealthy potential in world PvP, their ability to do various things outside of the main fight, I would say, in BGs. But also, you know, their ability to take down healers with high burst due to ambush uh, and backstab in the main fight and then get away again. Obviously, it's going to be stronger in the future. 
This is why I haven't put it in S tier. You know, their lack of stuns, their lack of general mobility is kind of letting them down a little bit. But again, in duels as well, they're able to take down most classes relatively comfortably given the correct player in control of the class. So they're an A tier as well for me. They're not quite they're not quite at the level of the, you know, the raw strength of some of the other classes that we've got in there. So I've taken this down a notch, but overall, a very strong class. Next up, we've got Demo Lock. And I'm just going to, again, consider this. We've basically kind of gone over what you would consider Demo Lock with regards to Affi Lock, where they can run meta. Uh, I'm just going to take Demo out of the mix. Generally, you're not going to go for the Demo talents that much. And I'm just going to keep this in F tier for simplicity, just because we've kind of already talked about it with Affi. Destro, a lot less powerful than I was expecting. And it, honestly, it does make sense. This was one of the classes that I incorrectly predicted pre-launch where I thought it was going to be stronger than Affliction. Actually, all in all, it's going to be a lot weaker due to the Chaos Bolt not hitting as hard as I was expecting and obviously the difficulty of actually getting casts off causing them some problems. So I would probably put these down, even though, you know, they're not as strong as Affli. I'm going to probably put them down in B tier with Warrior. You know, they can still cause problems if in the correct player's hands. And it kind of really does depend on, you know, what sort of runes and setup you play with. But if you're going for the, the Chaos Bolt, ideology which is what i consider destro yeah then i think it's it's a pretty solid beat here. disc is pretty much top dog right now um it's it's i'd say up there with with the best of them in s tier definitely the strongest healer but you can play it very aggressively as well especially in world pvp if you have a good amount of spell power you know void plague is doing insane damage a Monculi doing insane damage and you know Penance, Pom, both very efficient if you decide to, to pick those runes. So yeah, their kit overall is very complete. They have Dispel, they have Shield, they have Fear. So compared to a lot of other classes, they're uh, they're in good shape even without the runes. And then the runes just bring this extra damage and efficiency that really just is the icing on the cake. And they're just a, a really, really strong, strong spec overall right now. You know, you can you can easily pull out the you know the 1v2s the 1v3s in the world against lesser capable players if you know what you're doing on a disc right now which is a lot of fun next up we've got ellie and i think ellie is in a spot where it's it's okay but it's not quite there yet they recently got their overload buff to up to 50 percent so you can play sort of this lava burst overload uh way build where they're pretty tanky but they have you know this really good burst potential as well I think that they are a little bit weaker maybe than the arcane mage spec but it depends on the situation. I don't want to put them in B tier because I don't I don't think they deserve that. I think they are better than B tier. However, when level 40 rolls around, I think you will see Ellie coming into S tier. Different conversation, different video. I think right now Ellie is is an A tier, but obviously they're going to really struggle to cast lightning bolts. They are strong in their certain niche. Outside of that, they're going to really struggle. You know, they have this great burst potential. They're pretty annoying to face for a lot of classes in duels due to that tankiness and survivability with the instant shock damage also coming out of them to cause a lot of pressure. So, all in all, could be better, could be worse. We'll uh, we'll put a pin in it and we'll see how it, how it you know how it pans out. But not many not many really good Ellie's playing uh, in, in PvP as well is is another thing that makes the spec quite hard to rate because if you see a really good Ellie, they will cause problems. But a lot of the Ellie's that aren't playing quite correctly are uh, are going to be struggling struggling a little bit more. So that's just something to keep in mind. Next up, we've got Enhance. And Enhance is something that I thought we would see a little bit more of. Very strong when it comes to something like flag carrying. You know, there's definitely been some good flag carriers for Enhance. Obviously, that's the, the one-hand Enhance build that is very tanky. You have the option to play two one-handers as well, the dual wield spec, and the damage is pretty good on this as well. I don't know if I would put them above B tier though. I think the tank spec kind of brings them up a little bit. Um, however, they have a lot of weaknesses. Their mobility isn't great, and they're exploited relatively easily. You know, if you're uh, if you're smart about killing Tremor, they're very susceptible to fear. They're pretty susceptible to slows. You can purge their ghost wolf so you know if, if you don't let them connect then they are definitely going to struggle once they connect they can put out some nice burst but overall i think you're going to be better off trying to play the tankier spec rather than the the, the, the dual wield spec so i'm going to put this in b tier right now 
again we might start seeing some more of them maybe you know seeing a little bit more uh popularity in the spec going forward but overall shamans i haven't seen that many of them so far even while playing horde aside from you know the, the tank spec and, and the flag carrying capabilities of it next up we've got feral and feral is i think also a tier I think it's getting overshadowed a little bit by how strong boomies are at the moment and i think a lot of ferals are playing the sunfire spec which for me is kind of just a cheese spec where it's taking advantage of a rune that is just over um it, it, i don't i don't want to say overpowered but it's like there's too much of the overall specs power on this certain area uh it would be nice to see them sort of sharing some of that power with some of the more core feral abilities so that you can see that you know then more natural feral play style come out i think i'm putting it in a tier for now since they're okay um and they kind of feel like they align with some of the other classes in a tier uh i think they're definitely stronger than the stuff in b tier so that seems about right for them at the moment frost mage so again we talked a little bit about that in in the arcane section where we're kind of including them together where you played like the frost talents but then you play arcane blast and then you play living flame and it's kind of like this mishmash of the, you know of, of all the mage stuff it's almost like elemental mage where you're just taking kind of the best of everything so i don't know if i really want to rank just like a pure frost mage i guess you do see some but i don't think they're that powerful I think they're probably down in like B tier, you know, they're really struggling with damage. And so you're really there to provide, you know, that utility, the slows, the blizzards, the novas, rather than, you know, that that nice burst potential that we know and love from Frost, which I think is, again, something that we'll likely see at level 40. So I'm going to put those in that in B tier right now. Uh, again, kind of struggling in the same regard as, as Destro. You know, Ice Lance is not that powerful yet. Majors don't have Shatter yet to, you know, get that real good value for ice lance so yeah struggling in the same regard as destro where they have to cast and the casts aren't really doing that much when they do manage to get them off fire again not that good in duels i would say the capability of just popping a load of living bombs out obviously is nice in in group pvp but generally the pressure they're putting out isn't that high even with all that in mind I would say they're slightly better than Frost in terms of overall pressure, but they're worse in terms of overall utility. So I think I'm actually just going to put them in B tier with Frost. Uh, then we have Fury Warrior. Again, I'm not really counting Fury. Haven't really seen them in PvP. They just don't exist. Um, I've already talked about arms. So any sort of potential Fury stuff kind of just goes lumped in with arms at this point. Um, and, you know, see above sort of thing. Next up, we've got Holy Pala, and this is like another one which we just don't really see that much. Um, you know, so many of the healers that we actually see in, in BGs and Wild PvP is just, you know, Disc Priests, maybe the occasional Resto Druid. So it's actually really hard to really properly rate Holy Pala. I think they're potentially going to be stronger, you know, going forward at 40, but you need to consider that they still don't get cleanse or magic debuffs they have they have diseases at the moment but they don't have magic debuffs and they still won't at the 40 bracket so this is actually gonna remove a lot of their potential power you know that that dispel magic is really really powerful so yeah not many people playing holy power at the moment but i don't want to put it in the ft i don't think it's as rare as some of the other specs but it's just overall their uh, you know their flash of light is very weak to deal with all the higher rune damage right now so then they have to use more things like holy light uh, and this is obviously way less efficient for them they're going um a lot faster so then you're kind of just bringing them for, you know, freedom um, and, and potentially bot. And it begs the question, you know, why not just be ret at this point? And I think most paladins have just gone ret, uh, which is why you're seeing so few, so few holy palas. So I'm actually just going to plop them in C tier. I just can't justify putting them in B tier. I haven't seen them enough. And, and, you know, they are so rare. And when you do see them, you're just not really worried at all. So that's going to be our first C tier class or spec next up is holy priest again it's basically the same as this priest with some worse talents so i'm gonna plop it in f tier and and again it's not that the spec is exactly oh yeah every single point is in disc but it's that sort of that idea or play style behind it that is this is what we're sort of trying to rank here 
so if you didn't understand any of the specs please do say because that's kind of what we're trying to look at here uh prop pala again haven't really seen any prop warrior resto druid so resto druid is one of the classes or specs that i thought you know is going to be really weak um they're going to really struggle but i actually think they are the second best healer right now and that's kind of scary because i think they're going to scale a lot going forward when we start getting more bonus healing on the gear and the gear is going to start getting nutty i think I think Resto Druids are going to scale really well and they're going to start getting really efficient with Life Bloom and Rejuve. And we're going to start having problems with Resto Druids uh, to the point where at level 60, I think we might see some uh, some potential Resto Druid nerfs. That's a big claim and it also depends a lot on things like runes. Uh, obviously not needed at the moment, don't get me wrong. But if the Druids, if, if Resto Druids scale like they think they're going to, they're going to be really, really incredible when we come to level 60 in SOD. So keep that in mind. I think they are probably A tier. It's it's it's, it's a generous A tier. It's it's I think it's either A or B tier. Um feel free to comment on this one guys. I'm gonna put it in A tier for now. Since I think it's you know you do see some rest of druids and they aren't aren't uh complete dead weight. Kind of personal opinion on that one, but I'm gonna put it in A tier for now. Resto Shaman. So this is another one where it's like it's it's hard to rate because there are so few Resto Shamans. And they on paper have some good tools, but they kind of lack the um the instant kind of survivability plus I guess throughput. And this is something that usually comes with Riptide, and I think if Riptide as a rune gets added, Resto Shamans are going to start being really scary. So that's something to watch out for in, you know, future tiers. I think right now with the with that missing, I think they are I would say I would put them in B tier. I don't think they are as bad as as Holy Palace. You know, they have some some decent runes and some decent potential, but they're definitely not above B tier. And and this is why I was also hesitant to put Druid down in B tier. I think Druids are definitely better than Resto Shamans right now. Uh, next up, we've got Rep Paladin. And Rep Paladin, I think, is another S tier boy. I think they are really strong right now. Some things, I expect that I think I was expecting to be slightly weaker, but their damage is, is solid. You know, Hodge is probably the main stun in the game right now. Uh, I think it's more accessible and, and, you know, more usable than the rogue ranged stun. You know, they have good utility, they have good survivability. Bubble is annoying as hell. So I think I think they are worthy of their S tier status right now. Next up we've got Shadow Priest. And again, this is what I was talking about with Disc earlier. You are not really gonna see many Shadow Priests. People have tried to make Mindflay work. They've tried to do patch notes with regards to runes to make Mindflay work. It's still not worth it. Void Plague is king. Mind Flay is still worse than doing actual wand damage. So I, I would consider the Mind Flay full on committing to Mind Flay is, is Shadow Spec. And I just haven't really seen anyone running that in PvP. Definitely not successfully. Uh, so I'm just going to whack it in F tier. It makes me really sad because I really want to play Shadow and I'm really looking forward to 40. But at the moment, the disc play style is just the one that everyone's going for. It's so strong, there's, there's kind of no reason not to. So I'm going to put it in the, the, this is the NA, you know, not available, not North America. Sorry, boys um tier and yeah we just haven't seen any uh yeah there's just, there's just not enough runes to make shadow viable potentially a, a spec with you know five spirit tap five blackout two fear in and then some points in disc and holy is is a viable one but again i still wouldn't really class that as shadow because you're not taking mind play so for simplicity i'm leaving it off and we'll just you know kind of include that with disc because it, it sort of plays out the same way. And next we've got Sub Rogue. And again, haven't really seen that many. At least not distinguishably like Sub Rogues. It kind of, again, plays the same sort of way as the Combat Rogue. Whereas the Combat combat Talents are just slightly better. They'll still be using Daggers. So whether you want to call that Sub if you want, I don't know. But most of the Talent Points are ending up in Combat. With, you know, some potential extra damage on Backstab. There are some Cheese builds for buffing up Ambush. I think most people are just playing the combat build though, so I'm just, again, for simplicity, going to put this in the F tier. Uh, does not exist, uh, or haven't seen them, or they don't distinguish themselves enough from a spec that's already on the list to, to make the cut. 
And then survival. Survival's a tricky one, right? Because I thought survival was going to be really good. And this is probably the main thing I was wrong with in my predictive list. And the re reason for that is flanking strike was bugged and is now just like tier awful. Um, and so you're basically not really seeing any survival hunters, which was surprising for me. But the pets are so strong and the rest of the kit just kind of pales in comparison with that. And so the, the, the two other hunter specs kind of embrace that way more. So you're just not really seeing many, if any, survival hunters as uh, as a result of that. Um, and so any any people that are playing survival sort of play it the same sort of way. You know, they play the Wind Serpent, they stay at range. They're not really looking for that melee melee gameplay. And also Raptor Strike. We were from the data mine stuff. Raptor Strike was an instant rather than not a next hit, uh, and this is not the case. So yeah, I'm gonna actually put survival in F tier, where we just don't see them. We have, it's it's either it's either so bad because flanking strike is so bad and it's just not worth it compared to the other two specs. I think it's actually still not a terrible spec, but obviously people want to play what is meta, and I think right now BM and MM are just way superior in in most regards for the stuff that is meta. So yeah, that's the end of the tier list. If there's anything again you disagree with, I think this one's pretty up to date with patch notes. Again, this is the 28th of December. So please keep in mind when commenting what the date is and when this has been released. I cannot go back in time and retroactively tell myself patch notes from the future. So I will have to make a new video if anything drastically changes. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you had a great Christmas and have a happy new year.